is an alumni of College of Engineering Trivandrum and has acquired high qualification from Bits Pilani. He is presently the Director, Technical at TNC and the Honorary Director and Senior Consultant at CAG. Yes, good morning to all of you. So nice to be here on the SEMS campus to talk about Industry 4.0 and emerging technologies. Actually, I'm not supposed to talk about it. I'm not talking about it. I'm privileged to have an eminent team of panelists with me who will exactly do the talking and I'll be doing the moderating. But let me introduce the topic to you just for a general understanding. And uh, this happening on the eve of Indian I mean, Day days is a great thing to happen because this is what the future is of engineering. The employability of the students, engineering students especially, depends on a lot on how much you gather information on IoT and related topics. Okay, now let me invite the panelists to be seated and make the podium. Let me stay here. Nice to have eminent panelists on this engineers' day celebration. Am I audible to all of you? The back, back seaters? Yes? yes. yes. Last row? Yes. Please come forward. Please come forward. Please come forward. Please come forward. Welcome on board, all the panelists. They cover different aspects of IoT, IoT and uh, 4.0. That is, they, they will talk about machine learning, robotics, IoT, and how we manage this from the human point of view and the machine point of view. So this is what Industry 4.0 is in a nutshell. It connects everywhere with the industry, with our personal life and our professional life. The IoT, Internet of Things, Machine Learning, Embedded Systems, and all the emerging technologies which I was, which I am going to just briefly touch upon now. This is the growth curve of the various emerging technologies that we have nowadays. Actually, this, this is based on data of 2018. The things have changed. The graph has moved on further in the last four or five years. So we have a lot of technologies which are just, just picked up but disappeared due to various implementation problems. But technologies on IoT, embedded systems, cloud computing, machine learning, deep, deep learning, etc. has come to existence and will be staying with us for taking us to 4.0 and further to industry 5.0. These are the various work groups working across the globe on the various technologies related to 4.0. Okay, we are basically discussing 4.0 and the future of work in that arena, but we may briefly touch upon 5.0 also. This is the evolution, as you see here. Here, can you hear me? So here we have in the during the 1700 era, we had all steam power. Can you hear me? Sir, yes. Sir, can I make a suggestion? Can the panelists sit like this so that we can see the whole screen? The that is what I was telling. That's that's good. Can they sit like this and like this so that we can see the idea? Screen? Thank you. I was just thinking about it. Thank you for the suggestion. The last lines are on the ground stage. It will be difficult to leave the whole stage. But we can see it also then here on the ground. No, it's really a presentation. Just only five minutes. Okay, okay. It's a good idea. We'll join as a team. Let's start by making the presentation. Thanks for the idea again. Okay, now? Yeah. Thank you. So 
India, they have the evolution of the industry revolution from parts of the world to parts of the world is very familiar and there is a big gap with the, of the advent of three points of the world and still a considerable gap of the advent of four points of the world. In the industry four points of the world, uh, we talk about IoT, embedded systems, artificial intelligence, cognitive computing networks, etc. Actually, we, and I as an engineering student, I was in the industry three, three points of the world. There I was a startup my career and I was a CET alumnus. I started my career in Okara Street Plant and there we had only three points of the world at that time. What it translated means that in the middle of the night we need to rush to the plant to calculate something, to turn a screw or something because there is no other way available. There is no uh, automation. Everything had to be done in a closed loop which is electromechanical or mostly electronic. But still programmability was constrained a lot. We could not program it. We had to do only uh, limited circuit analysis and circuit design. And once, because when I joined the, so when I joined Mokero Street Plant, we had to work on breadboards. We had to work on breadboards and PCBs in a manual way. If you wanted to test a new circuit, if you wanted to test a new circuit, you had to do a labor, a laborious process of assembling everything, testing, and then, if the test fails, we need to modify it manually. We need to unplug, I mean, desolder, solder again, and do a lot of tests. Gone are those days now, students and delegates. Now we have the advent of 4.0, where embedded systems come into play. You have a circuit, there is a problem, you can always overwrite the program, either remotely or by a USB cable. So that's the advantage of that. And now, when it comes to 5.0, it's much better. It's co-working, co-working with machines. In 4.0, for example, we have a, uh, say, any, uh, just mention any factory, where injection molding happens. For example, family plastics, for example. In, they are still in 4.0, but they have a program, robotic arm, which follows the program and nothing less. It follows the program, tracks the program. If something goes wrong with the parameter changes, it doesn't know unless there is a manual intervention. But in 5.0, which is just emerging, the robot it becomes a cobot and it, and it, it becomes adaptive. It changes by itself, the program, understanding the environment, requirement. Okay. And uh, to a great extent, that limits manpower, but skilled manpower requirement goes up. 5.0 will briefly touch upon now and uh, let's see the evolution further. So now A is defined as a new electricity, data forms the oil and the nervous system is the IoT. And robots are getting slowly replaced by robots even in the 4.0 era. Not only is the industry that is affected, but even the advent of digital society happens in the transition from 4.0 to 5.0. Okay, so this And this is very important thing. So with changes in technology comes a lot of changes in the outlook of the people. People are our key resource, but they need to be adapted and adopted for the change arena. Maintain jobs get wiped out. Skilled people, engineers, are required more in number. Gone are the days of supervisors. You may supervise three roads will come to an end because the system will take care of itself. Supervisors have to be redeployed. Job enrichment has to be done to supervisors for their role. So they will come up in a big way only if they learn the new techniques. So we want the, the workers in the industry who are there since the 80s or 90s should not be disturbed or afraid. They should be able to manage the change with proper training and other methods, which our panelists will discuss. And here, I think now it's time to start the panel discussion. Each area of what I discuss now will be covered by one or more panelists. So here we have with us 
please come forward, Sina Simon. Give a large round of applause to us. Yes, thank you. 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 Actually, I contacted the general manager of ASL. She said, oh, I will not be good at this. Let my engineer come and do the job. And she has come here. We also appreciate that, we have discussed this, that the older generation is slowly getting disconnected with the industry. They are there, but they want all the work to be done by the young generation. This is an example. And you want to be here. And uh, she will ask her about, will I fit in from here? So please come, let's see how it happens. And she is happily sitting here. As a representative of the GM of the ESP. Okay. Now, she will talk to us on the internet backbone, which is a prerequisite for 4.0, 5.0 and further. So, unless we have a stable backbone, I was working in smart cities, so we can lease lines for internet connection for vehicle tracking, BRBS, etc. So, once the internet fails, everything comes to a standstill, that's the other side of the coin. So, how she will take care of that? She has been I mean, um, the engineers like her have hard maintaining um, internet backbones in various industries, especially the smart city projects. Can you come forward and explain? Please. Yeah. I wish you all a happy engineers day. <laughs> I wish you all a happy engineers day. Uh, first of all, I thank India, SEMS, and DSNL for giving me an opportunity to be part of this event. I, I completed my MTEP in 2008. Then again coming back to campus is always giving me happiness. Uh, it is an opportunity to meet you with the new technology, new students. Find support as already this year discussed. For Industry 4.0 proper working, a proper backbone support is very essential. As a service provider, BSN is already well having already well established network connectivity all over India, irrespective of areas like uh, whether it is villages or towns. Everywhere BSN is providing services. In the terms of this 4.0, I wish to explain something because after COVID, during COVID time also, the demand for network become very high. Bandwidth requirement will be increased, customer base is increased, uh, that the mode of working changed. So, for high such a situation, our backbone should be able to handle such a situation. For that, every aspect, even if it is a media or the switches we are using, the routers we are using, even the servers we are using, everything is getting updated. Yeah, all over the network, that transition already happened. Now, BSNL is capable of providing services for supporting 4.0, that is seamless network connectivity. Here I am happy to mention that for Chandrayaan 3, connectivity is provided by BSNL. <laughs> Another thing is, in, in the 4.0 point of view, uh, the services like the M2M, IoT services are provided by BSNL for medical uh, monitoring rapidity. Another thing is, like the cloud services also is provided by BSNL. So, as industry for revolution is happening, the same improvement and technology updation is happening in our own BSNL network. Be proud for that because it is a government organization. Our own technologies which is supporting our nation's improvement, it is be proud of it. Security Operation Center. I wish to give you an insight in, in the 
chemistry purple zero everything is data so security of data in transit handles it is very crucial for example suppose we have a data in your hand for tomorrow's presentation the next day when you are opening you may be ready for giving uh, presentation the data is encrypted by somebody you cannot access it so whatever work you do it is in vain so security is very important nowadays there are various cyber attacks are happening in our network like uh, ransomware attack mining mining the middle attack data exfiltration so these type of things are happening for example mining the middle attack happened means our uh, network will collapse because instead of what we are giving instruction the other person may be giving for example if in a medical manufacturing the components itself whatever they have to mix it is got changed to mix see the impact so when technology improving the security aspect we should always be care so i wish to give you an insight that when as part of 4.0 please incorporate security awareness also part of your career and please continue it because security awareness and keeping cyber security always in heart is very essential for future another thing is Uh, in in case of BSNL also, BSNL is always taking care of the security. In uh, when we are integrating an equipment itself, we are going uh, checking all the formalities and we are ensuring that uh, these equipments are complying with the security standards. Also, we have security policies we are implementing, especially because uh, we are providing services for most of the government organizations, the other uh, army. so every time security is a most important concern for us because our data is very important so we have our own security policies we are implementing data uh, segmentation in network sec uh, network segmentation is done by other things like uh, uh, blacklisting white listing network that will be and this part technologies all these things i am just giving to you that Because you will have some idea. Because in this, like as I told, time is very precious. <laughs> in short span of time, how much information I can pass, I have to pass. So I am giving some keywords for you guys. Just uh, Google it. Uh, if any doubt, you can ask in the uh, thing. But I will tell you as part of four point zero and future, cyber security is mandatory essential. When the service is working, it should with the proper security. If the level network or the level service only we can understand, we can go further. So it should be a thirty-year process. Also, when you are developing something, also you keep in mind that it should work to perform and develop the proper security. Thank you. Audience, I ask you a question if you allow me. That is regarding the smart cities where four point zero is in existence. Not the data is only. Regarding a citizen and data, yes. what does BSN do to protect it? For example, it's a 4.0 case study. Yes. Say, for example, Surat, I was working at Surat Smart City project. There we were with BSN uh, for you know security, hazard management. That is X Y Z. All data going to the hackers. Okay. Uh, what all we were doing there? What were we doing there? Actually, for uh, BSNL, we already have access control list is there. Already, like the security agencies, like the certain NCIABC, DOD, RO, all are monitoring our network. So, if any unwanted or malicious communication is happening, or there is a chance for that, we are already always keep it informed. So, it will help us to prevent, mitigate the incident. Please be seated. We will uh, welcome our guests. Let me have a few minutes to give me the next address. So we have with us uh, Amit Raman here. Can you please come on stage? So uh, Amit Raman actually is in the 
hardware of 4.0, developing programs, firmware, and software for the development of robotics, machine learning, etc. So, for engineers and uh, engineering students, it's very important rather uh, as uh, Madam Sir Googling and uh, YouTube watching, it'll give you an idea of what it is. But to get a real feel of the technology, you need something on the ground level. A cloud count, cloud computing. Cloud computing will be a different thing altogether. But let us hear from Abhir Raman about the hardware, software, firmware requirements of 4.0. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for having me here. Yeah, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here uh, talking about you know uh, industry 4.0 and uh, the future of work because rapidly things are changing and we can see that happening uh, when I have my interactions with the industry with the schools colleges you know whomever we interact with we see this happening so it's going to have a huge impact in terms of our lives and the young generation I, I believe should be aware of the change that is happening so. Uh, uh, I'll just speak about uh, the company first and then I'll go into the technologies as well. So Inco Robotics, what we do is we want to create an awareness on these kind of technologies to the young minds and as well as to the general public in terms of what these technologies are. Because right now what is happening is robots we have seen in TVs or movies and things like that. But you know, having a robot, just like having a laptop or a smartphone nowadays, very soon we'll all be having robots. That is the reality. Yeah. And it's going to be an integral part of our life, whether any industry that you look at. Yeah. And that is where the world is moving into. Because at the end of the day, we don't want to do menial tasks. Yeah. Tasks that is of low value nature. And this has been the evolution that man has come through. If you look at, you know, uh, 100 years ago, you know, we, we used to go to the, our great grandfathers used to go to the well and look, uh, collect the water and come. Now it is coming in our home and we, we don't want to go back to that kind of technology again. Yeah, because that is how we have developed in terms of what, what our progress is. And that is the progress of the evolution of mankind. And we continue to evolve. There will be a lot of uh, cons to it, but we continue to uh, make, you know, the changes that are required and continue to adapt to those kind of changes. This is what we have seen. So as Inca, one of the things that is there is to create this kind of awareness. And our vision at the end of the day is to have something called a robopark, which encapsulates or creates an ecosystem for all of us to survive. Why I say that is because what we have seen when we started launching uh, our company and going into a lot of schools, colleges, and doing a lot of general public shows is by in, in the in, in, in using expos. We have seen that the kind of anxiety and excitement that we have created in the young minds as well as in the general public, okay, this is what it is in terms of if we are showing AI and things like that, it, it creates an excitement for the young minds as well. So uh, we, we want to create those kind of uh, infotainment centers yeah, uh, as part of the first vertical that we have, which is a robo land. The second vertical is into academics. So as I said, irrespective of whether you want to become a doctor, an engineer or a lawyer, you have to understand this technology. Even in uh, Astor Hospital nowadays, the doctors are using robotics for surgeries. So, whichever field that you take in, this is going to be an integral part of our life. So, academics is going to be one that everybody has to understand what these technologies are. What is AI? What is IoT? What is rapid prototyping? We are AR. I'm again throwing a lot of terminologies to you, but this is what we are in, in, a, in, in our world right now. You know. Uh, so all of this, you, you need to understand how it is having an impact, what is the difference from one technology to the other, and this is going to be something that we do in the academic vertical. So anyone will have that facility to come and learn by doing and experiencing what it is. Yeah. Uh, the, the third vertical is basically into R&D, research and development, where we'll be focusing on products and solutions. So anything which from a, a small scale industry to a large corporate, who wants robotic solutions or futuristic technology solutions, we will be collaborating with them and providing them with that solution. And the last vertical is, we can't do this all alone, so we need to have more people into the system, so we will incubate new startups with people with ideas and things like that. So that is what our vision is, to create this ecosystem, the community for us to survive and thrive, 
and become a global player in this market. We are a small company now, with five years old, but we have seen that this is required for us to take it to the next level and for us to be ensuring that, you know, uh, China, Spain is our game, India's game, so we want to ensure that we are there as a global leader in, in this technology. Yeah. And why do you think we had that opportunity when, you know, 20 years ago when the computer revolution came in? Because we were the only ones who could speak English and we had that focus in terms of the, the workforce that is there to be at a global scale. That is why the computer, like the Infosys and all, you know, Wipro and all of this is booming right now. Because even now, we have that. Um, so, what I, what I want to say is, you know, that when, when it comes to technology, yeah, robotics or AI uh, or IoT, all of this is going to have an impact. It has its own future. If you see, uh, Chat GPT came in at the start of this year and it disrupted the way we look at and do a lot of things. Even right now, uh, if I have to get a lot of pointers or things like that, I just go to Chat GPT and type it there and I get a lot of pointers for me to, you know, uh, put into my emails and things like that. So a lot of things and work has become easy for me. The same thing applies to a lot of, uh, for you guys as well in terms of how you can use AI to take it to the next level. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that we have is IoT. There's a lot of potential in IoT because if you see, all of us as a country, we have moved into 5G. Yeah, what it means is, it is 20 times faster than 4G. So this means that all of our videos and things like that we're watching on internet will be, uh, can be viewed without offering. And all of the devices that is at our homes can be connected to the internet. So it will go into preventive maintenance kind of things. So uh, at the end of the day, this is how technology is going to help us and support us in terms of our uh, like better living. Yes, sir, we will hear more about you as well. Happy to have a lot of information on you. Let us now move on to the next panelist. So that sure. the whole panel will be open to the uh, audience. Now here we have with us a senior technocrat, Kudeep Ramkhan, sir. Uh, he is into risk management. He was the former VP of Bank of America and was associated as a senior consultant with Shell also. Let me have the pleasure to invite him on stage. <laughs> Please have your seat, sir. Maybe you can talk briefly, briefly about uh, your contributions in the industry 4.0 as regards the risk management is concerned. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. And firstly, I want to thank you all. It's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, firstly, among some very eminent. Uh, professionals in the industry who have really, really shown the way, led the way in terms of uh, yeah, how, how you take the edge of technology from an engineering background and then make it so useful for, uh, not just within India, I'm sure it's, it's, it's all globally useful like across mankind. So uh, the second thing is, I really love the crowd here. It's, it's fantastic to have you all uh, people here uh, who are in the academic sphere and all the budding engineers out there, the budding leaders of tomorrow, and uh, all focused on uh, uh, this uh, panel discussion. So, looking forward to this. So, let me uh, quickly uh, touch upon uh, what Dr. Ajit had uh, requested me. Um, I think uh, we should step back a bit. I'm going to bring you two dimensions, essentially, one around uh, Risk factors are around human risk, right? What are the risk factors around human beings and the ecosystem in which the human beings? And the second part, so you will you will start thinking what's technology got to do with it, and we'll come there. The second thing is around risk factors around technology itself. When you adopt various technologies, what are the kind of risk factors you want to think about? So, in order to touch to the two things, first of all. And to appreciate risk as a concept, I would probably take you back uh, one step, and that one step really is to say, you know, you have to think beyond technology. Now, what does that mean? What does thinking beyond technology mean? Why? The why is the core statement. Why are we using technology? Why are we? Uh, yeah, what do you want to do with this technology for yourself, right? 
And uh, what does it mean to humankind and to the ecosystem? And I think, yeah, it's, it's common sense in that sense if you keep watching the, the various uh, industry, uh, you know, from 1.0 to the journey, you just now walk up to where we are getting into 5.0. And you will see that the time frame of that journey is diminishing. We are getting into new, new versions almost now within every two, three years. That's what is the way it's the acceleration of technology is happening. And, and we'll talk about what, what that is as well. Uh, so the second thing is uh, the, the risk factors around technology itself. Now in the human factors, when you talk about 2.0, and 5.0, which is almost there. You are into 5.0, I would say, right. the way things are going, right? So, uh, the human factors, what are they? I mean, it's essentially around, a lot of it is around skills. And one would think, when, you know, when I was uh, your age, I was thinking that, you know, learning ends with uh, taking a college degree, and then it's all about job. And what you do now is all about continuous learning. And what's happening to the continuous learning is also about accelerated continuous learning. Okay, and that means you are unlearning things first. First, what you learn, you forgot, you have to keep that aside and then adapt to what is newly required. And that means new learnings. And sometimes you have to, you know, just unlearn and relearn everything. You can see that in the software industry, for instance. Yeah, a lot of us were so crazy after programming, programming more of software engineers are really threatened when they think about AI because it looks like AI will take away all the programming work, which is not really true, by the way. Okay? Every time you do technology innovation, yes, it takes away certain parts because you make it easy, but then you're opening yourself up with new opportunities to learn something new and change the whole dimension of the game, leveraging what you are getting. So I think those are the things uh, I want to bring on the human side. The, the second thing is uh, the human-machine collaboration. We are soon in an age, we already have, if you look at, I mean, your mobile phone is your closest AI uh, friend at the moment with ChatGPT and other apps sitting out there. But that's, that's what's happening with human and machines now talking to each other. Language is not a barrier anymore. The third thing is, this is coming right to your home, right into your hands now. It's no longer, you know, you have to go to a factory or go to a place. Right? So the work is at home, right. You know, right where you are, not even home, wherever you are. And uh, let me say what it is. Yeah, so the three or four things which continuously comes into the human uh, area, I would say is, uh, as uh, students, very important. And even when, once you are past students and your work, curiosity. The first thing is to get very curious with what's happening. The second thing is communication, as uh, Sir uh, already mentioned in the morning. Yeah? Communication is so very important in this whole, uh, whole gamut of things. The third is innovation. Because innovation, collaboration and complementing. Let me put these three together. Because when you collaborate, you get work done better. But when you complement, you do not reinvent anything. Yes. You don't necessarily have to reinvent. Globally, you have everything these days. Right. Some are with us, some are with other countries, some are with across, across many, many places. Now, the key thing is to collaborate, know what's happening, use it collaboratively, and then complement each other. So, you are building on somebody's or maybe several people's uh, good learning and experience to make something big and I think rocket science which we have today, satellite science, all that is a lot of collaboration and complementing that's happening, that's already you are seeing. And the same thing you have to continue now with machines along, artificial intelligence and robots, okay, cobots maybe, so that's also collaborative robots. Sorry, that's good, that's good. Yeah. Pradeep sir, yeah. shall we invite the next panelist and yes. have a group discussion? Or yeah, I would like to, uh, in the group yeah. discussion I like to bring a little bit around yeah, yeah, technology yeah. relevant first. Beautiful, that will be more interesting to the audience. Okay. So let's move on to our next panelist, who is Sri Pratik Sutha. We can't have a better person here than who is a nationalist leader who keeps traveling. He had been in Tibet only a few days back. Please welcome him. He's a journey of Think India, which is what is happening nowadays. And he's an alumni of IIT Madras and also a 
postgraduate of various foreign universities. Now, uh, we were discussing about uh, 4.0 and. Yeah, you can. Give me a chance. Are you an IoT? Yeah, yeah, sure. So let me introduce a complete introduction of you. So he is connecting technology with the students. I think grassroots awareness to be connected. And his intention is to, what should I say, spread the technology to the masses at the grassroots level. Now, as he desires, please take over the stage. Given the JWA advanced examinations paper, 
they were unable to solve that paper in compared to the IIT students. We are the country who are producing the best engineers in the world using our IIT system and our engineering colleges. So we should be very proud of it. We should be very proud of our engineers and scientists of India. You know, there is a, you must have heard about this RO system, reverse osmosis. You know how our engineers, how our people work. There is a person called Mahesh Gupta. He was of the quality, he was enjoying with the family and uh, suddenly his child was unwell because of, he said, uh, because of the water issue. What happened? There was uh, some, uh, you know, diagnosed with jaundice. He immediately worked upon that. SAK was like, what did I need to do? He came up with this RO system. Now that he is the founder of the tent RO, a thousand crore of turnover, he has made up one engineer who has come up with the solution of the problems. I think we need to have this mindset where I work for a thing in India. We are with this kind of solution and mindset. When we discuss the future of work, 2022 had a, you know one survey that telecom service providers, NAM is here, had the 7% in July 2022. Today's date, we have a 20% of workforce focusing on the telecom services. So we have already entered the industry 4.0. Not we are entering, we have already entered. But with that, we need to balance, we need to work about the work-life balance. Sir has very nicely mentioned two things. Uh, there is a physical, mental, intellectual and spiritual journey. How to balance this in the upcoming time? There is a need to earn, learn, relearn and reskilling for this specific focal door. There is a need to continuous learning opportunities. I myself come from a very rural area. Many of you must be coming from a very rural area. We need to know about all these opportunities. We need a continuous mentorship for that. Otherwise, we won't be able to sustain. For that, I think we need a human-centric approach. The biggest thing we need is the human-centric approach. A mental well-being in our work atmosphere. With that, of course, uh, digital literacy. With that, catalyzing a startup ecosystem, which will be a kind of will play a vital role in this uh, industry and future of the work. I feel there are so many things, but as I said, it's continuously looking at me. I think I will stop here, but <laughs> definitely this is a time where new things are coming up. A gig economy, you might have heard. You know, people are relying on gig economy as well. So, uh, my dear friends, this is a time of a great positivity. We all must work in the direction that we will take India. Uh, with that, you know, intensity, with upcoming whatever comes, we are not, you know, bothered or we are not kind of. Uh, no, there you go in here. We will work hard and we will uh, set our minds for the future. Thank you so much. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Am I audible? Yeah, it was a great talk, I should say. He's a national leader and full of ideas. He takes the technology 4.0 and even beyond that to the grassroots level so that the students can ignite it, it their minds set for the new stage. Now, let us move on to the next panelist. He is a young engineer, an entrepreneurial top student, plus the managing director of RP Group, a company in the IoT segment. Please give a large round of applause to him. He has started his own company even before he finished this engineering course. In the middle of it, while I was the general manager of the company, we had, I should say, um, given a tender for a certain project. And many firm, mature companies came in. And he came in as a company who, which he registered even when he was a student. The CEO was himself and the CTO was his classmate. And there were a few others holding positions, corporate positions, but there were still students in the S6 or S7 level. I was very impressed by that. That was way back in 2016, when the, I should say, the startup revolution had just started that time. He was there at that time itself. Now he has matured into a good companies, the managing director. Let us hear from him about a successful, uh, what should I say, incubation and uh, maturization stage. Over to you. That will be great. Let us 
Let's have it for a few minutes, then we'll have a group discussion.
the chances of getting that uh, getting the uh, ride as cancelled will be very minimalistic in our project. So that is one. Uh, the next thing is how do we market this? In industry 4.0, we have a new technology called digital marketing, where we, whenever we talk about, uh, if you want to go for a movie, if you are planning to go for a movie and discussing with your friend, next time, when after uh, two or three hours, you can see a uh, mail notification regarding the nearest theater and nearest uh, movie release. So these are things which we are. Some that means your phone is overhearing your uh, uh, conversations. Also. Uh, on the robotic side, I think uh, Amar can uh, speak more about that. Even uh, people are uh, in most of the chemical factories where they use to manufacture a lot of uh, uh, drugs which are very insecure for the human being, they are replacing it with uh, robots. Also, even in our home, we are using uh, a kind of uh, smart switches where uh, we can uh, turn off your mobile, uh, turn off your uh, uh, electronic devices through your mobile application. Earlier, uh, now what we have set up in our offices, whenever uh, we want to cut off the AC, we have set a timer in the AC through the mobile application and automatically when the AC cuts off, the uh, fan also starts. So that is how we have set it. So it doesn't mean to get up and go and uh, make the switch on. So that is actually uh, one another thing. So uh, now let me talk about a new uh, technology that is in the, uh, in the beginning. So uh, I have seen many uh, people who lack to speak uh, in English, and they uh, fail to have a, you know uh, get a good opportunity in other uh, business. Now um, there are many content creation applications available. Even the chat GPT. If you want to write a letter to a, a principal, if you want to have a leave application also, you can uh, do it in a wonderful manner, and the chat GPT does it. But even still, chat chat GPT has a uh, negative impact. The thing is, if you uh, give a question to ChatGPT, how is, what is the connection between Infosys and Microsoft, it will give you a paragraph. But what, again, if you type, what is the connection between Infosys and uh, Accenture Technology, it will give the same thing. So that is the challenge, and now you have to think about it, how you can come up with that solution and create a new thing. Okay, thank you so much. That was a great talk, Harry. I think some of your uh, changes have already been implemented by Uber. That is, when a driver cancels a ride, he loses his points. Your suggestions have been accepted already. It is a great thing. Ajit? Yes? May I interview? Please come forward. No, I am only specific to Uber. Yeah. See, the Uber the driver rating is based on the feedback, the feedback by the price hailer, who have discussion. That's not the right way. Today, with digital marketing, you can push a lot of positive feedbacks. With industry 4.0, we can capture real-time data on when he accepted, on-time performance, etc independent of the feedback of the person. That is real data. That is what we are talking about. I hope this is very clear to all of you. Those who understand technology, you can actually be paid to give a favorable feedback. You can be paid. And that is what we are seeing on the Uber platform. What is the feedback? Who gave the feedback? Lakshmi Madam gave the feedback. Roshan gave the feedback. Radhi Rajan sir gave the feedback. These are very subjective are very very subjective with industry 4.0 with the backbone provided by Sheena madam we can do real time and that is independent and that is quantitative feedback thank you sorry but I wanted to inform you Shumaji, that the work has already started in Uber and my junior from CET is already doing that that's what I was telling Eric Krishnan that uh, that work on real time capturing of data and machine learning artificial has already started, but it will take some time to take effect. Right now, if you the driver cancels it, he doesn't lose a point. So that work has already started. What is it? Thanks for making it understand. Please understand. Uh, I don't want to do any self-promotion. This technology is eight years old. 
it is done for rating pilots in aircraft. See, there is a high end for rating pilots in aircraft. This is very important because pilots of airplanes can fly only a minimum number of hours in a day. It is called duty limitation. It's a high stress job, very high stress. Like Radha uh, Radha know this rocket called, you, have, you can only have a duty of six hours or seven hours per day. Now within that time, they have to be on the air carrying passengers, not idle. They should not be idle, simply sitting there. This is already technology involved. Eight years ago, it's done. This system is called Flight Duty Time Limitation Monitoring, FDTL Monitoring. Flight Duty Time Limitation Monitoring. It's done. I'm not sure about what Ajit wanted to say. Thank you. Yeah, what, what I wanted to say was that what, what Harry was saying, the work has already started. There is a slight technological difference between what Krishnamurti was saying and what human needs. You need to have use appropriate technology for the appropriate environment. Now, uh, taking away topic from that, now the panel is open. I would like to, you know, welcome questions from the audience. Rajan, sir, would you like to ask something on this? Yeah, sure. Any any questions, please? Morning, everybody. It's not exactly the question, but uh, sharing some of the views and uh, um, made some notings of all the speakers here. And something to continue. Just to come back to my previous speaker. This is not only for the pilots. I am talking about the application part of it. Not only for the pilots. In railways also, we have similar or tougher categories where the attention is very much required. For example, a local pilot. Uh, Air pilot deals with only few flights, around 200, 300, 400 flights. But in case of the railways, where I work for a long time, and my colleague Mr. Uh, Ajit Amin, I know also I know from railway cooperation, uh, which is an interesting topic, especially in the background of a big accident we had very recently. In the case of a railway situation, the environment, uh, the local pilot. See, uh, there is a reason behind that uh, uh, driver's uh, designation getting changed to the local pilot. They wanted it because they wanted to in some terms. And uh, if she does something wrong, uh, the life loss is around 2,000, 3,000 of any asset which is beyond the But unfortunately, we still uh, did not think of it of implementing such a good uh, software of the application of uh, these AA systems, etc. in railways. But I would like to say at this point that there is a lot of scope for not only for the pilots or the Uber drivers, but it is applicable to anybody who is having such an intensive and highly intensive unlike a rocket or a pilot or a very high truck driver or a long distance, you know, a lot of accidents happen. The tourist buses, any area it is applicable. So let us have some good thoughts of the technology university. And this is the right form. I'm very happy that it is not delayed today. And regarding uh, some of the doubts, I was just thinking uh, one main point I want to tell you the very moment some technology comes in the paper, we see the talk about or read about that AI. The next column will be it is going to diminish all the job opportunities, it will take the uh, whole uh, affect the opportunities of the young people, it will not correct and that is not happening. But we face in railways. Whenever any something new comes, there will be immediately an opposition. Something like our magnetic, you know, whenever there is any engine electricity, there will be an opposition. So that was uh, pulling back. I fear, I, my apprehension is that it will pull back the uh, development. But it is not so. No way we lost the opportunity. But a simple example I'll tell you. Again, I'm running back to the railways because it's a common subject. Long time, when I joined in railway, some 40 years back, there was a steam lock of it. And there were a lot of law projects, but it was at Shalbo and uh, I think Polygon or etc. And uh, we used to employ around 2,500 people in my major law project in Reform Home somewhere. We had 2,500 uh, men who were uh, attending the law, steam law for those days, boiler attendant, boiler color, see, water color, see, 
then they inject a pain and a lot of things. Then very common decent amount of state. Immediately there was opposition. I don't know how decent can come into something, a lot of opportunities, in the SMB about that. New voice is not in the job. We experienced because I saw this generation, actually big evolution around four decades. But nothing happened with this in August. All the opportunities were shifted to different areas. Giving was an area, then uh, uh, funding was an area, monitoring of the language, a lot of things. And when the diesel came, more trains started coming in. More efficient. So the more trains could run, more people would come. More people would come, more trains would come. Somebody was telling that if you have some more five trains, the rail version come down. No. If there are more trains, more people will drive. If more people makes more demand. So that is the thing which people don't understand in marketing. So after some time, I have seen this uh, electric process. Then still it is all about more sophisticated. It was uh, initially it was not a microprocessor kind of law. Subsequently it was a processor kind of law. Now some people thought, especially the trade union, they used to come in better hours. When uh, the computer came, no? uh, people were against it. No, no, sir, how it can happen if it is cutting the job? Okay, nothing happened. Electric drop was up. The next generation is like what he called it the one day pass law was actually. He called it as a memos. Nothing happened. More and more demand it is never taking the opportunity. Why I tell you? Because the very moment you protect any technology like industry force zero you know, or artificial intelligence or anything cloud computing or any such thing. Nothing will happen. So it is all your job, engineer's job or marketer's job or leader's job or enterprise job that to convince the society, convince the mankind that there will not be any loss of opportunities and we have to support. Otherwise there will be a discrimination for the entire project. Thank you very much. Jamal sir, I mean, uh, would you like to ask a few questions to the panel? Because yeah. we have been talking of, yeah. like a debating on the topic. Actually, yeah. we have to sir, because yeah, yeah. actually Actually, you just said now, no? yeah, yeah. we talk about so many things, walking the talk is not happening. The engineers will do that. Now an engineer is actually doing that. This sir is actually doing what you are saying. He's walking the talk regarding bringing the technology to the masses. Yeah, regarding the yeah. technology to the masses, they are accepting it. At the same time, you should see that there is little opposition. The introduction should be such a way that it is wholeheartedly accepted by all parts of the field. Especially, I mean, the trade union, slavery, things like that, they should not be a, under the impression that already there is, I think, there is not an opposition for A. Why is that a, a, there is an opposition? And that opposition is likely to pull down, or at least to stop the uh, progress of the technology. Okay, okay. So now, that should be a good part to be done. And one more thing, I think yeah. you are telling that uh, after introducing this uh, A and other things, the supervisory part will be missing. This is not so. Supervisory part will not be missing. Supervisory part will be taking another shape. That's it's not right. a physical supervision. That is a similar type of supervision. So what I was telling was that it's not missing. Those job interviews that will happen. Yeah. Those supervisors will have to. They will be converted. Converted. There will be a convergence of technology actually. Because of the automation. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It is a convergence and yeah. inversion of the technology. Yeah. That means so let us move on. Okay. Thank you, business. Yeah. With with due respect, I have. Uh, Sir, yeah. Yeah, with due respect, I have no rights to interrupt you. May I request, can you take some questions from the students? Yeah. Because that is very important. If you can have some interaction with the students, you will have some interaction. If you have some Come forward. The panel is open to you. Please come forward so that and your observation on. If possible, students, when they come, to be a final student. Okay. So, uh, I am Dr. Vasi, Professor of School of Management Studies, Tucson. I want to ask Sri Pradeep. Not, I don't want to ask a question, I want you to react to it. Hackers are always ahead of the protectors. Please try to throw some light on that. Well, but it, is, it is in many ways true because there is, there is one element within the society as such across where we are trying to exploit. Whatever is a loophole in the technology, right? Just now, a supplementary question. How are they able to do it? See, uh, are there the smarter ones? Uh, let me let me introduce the subject of risk for those who are probably not so conversant, and I try to make it very simple because there are students who must be probably just entering into that place. But uh, you know, fundamentally, this is a risk question. If you ask me, okay, a risk 
of the ability of people who don't have the right mind in, uh, from a different perspective, they work from their own perspective, with their own uh, selfish motives perhaps, you know, and therefore, uh, yeah, they invent ways and means. Now, risk is a question of vulnerability. Anything that you have is vulnerable in nature. There are some points of strength, there are some points of weakness. And how you exploit your weakness is where you have a risk. Now, yeah, in technical language, we call it the threat surface. Okay? So your threat surface is high. Now, do you need to be worried about every threat surface? The answer is no, because you will always look at two things. One is the impact. If something happens, if there is an accident, what is the impact? For example, right? The second is, how often will that accident happen? For example, so the frequency at which it happens. So risk and impact. Are the, I mean, frequency and impact, the probability and impact are two elements that help you to quantify how big the risk is. Now, when you design and bring in new technologies, okay, we talked about human risk factors earlier, that is how humans can be affected. But the same thing, uh, this kind of, uh, you know, hacks, let's say cyber specific, is actually something that goes and uh, impacts your business or your well-being or your health or your safety or what not. Okay, it can even be used uh, significantly for exploiting uh, financial because that's where the money is. You go find a way to hack the bank, you can get all the money in your purse. Okay, and the point is to leave also untraceable. So, you have to think more than what the hacker is likely to think, number one. Okay. So you have to outthink them. When you bring in new technology, you have to look at all dimensions of risk that comes into the picture, which is financial, technical, safety, health, uh, impact to society, uh, and, and regulations are pretty much a very important component to bring along with technology. Because if you don't bring regulations to curb the misuse of technology, you will have that much more implications to society, right? So that's where I will start fundamentally. So you, the key is to outthink. Uh, why are hackers outthinking regular people? To be awareness, maybe we are not putting the right environment to pursue it comprehensively. We are not looking at it multidimensionally when you're bringing in the technology. Because, you know, if, yeah, at your age, I was so excited about technology. That's all that crossed my mind, how to make something work technically well. I never was forced to say, think about risk. And that is something you inbuilt into the product or inbuilt into your service. And, the, 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 and it's very common sense, that's the most interesting thing. It's only that today you use technology to leverage and address controls to mitigate those risks. And that you need to do. Now, that technology also needs to be risk-free. Otherwise, again, all the cyber things are of no use. So, the challenge there is, our technology in Industry 4.0 is happening across so many different areas, they are not standardized. So, if they are not standardized, imagine you have 50,000 types of bulbs. Okay, how many of those bulbs are risk-free? in its operation, in terms of duration, or in terms of safety. We don't know. If you bring it that way. So if standardization comes into a big schema of things to see that when you get into IoT. Yeah. See, see, just think of it. You are having, today you have the ability to bring manufacturing to your home. Example, think of three-dimensional printers. Okay? You can print whatever you want at your home very soon. You are making your own manufacturing machines inside or whatever thing you want in home. Now what is the risk associated with it? If you're not taking care, the, the question you are asking, I think, is, is about how thinking from a, a risk, bringing it into design, easier said than done, just two things, because it is not affordable. So there's a question of how much money you want to put into mitigating a risk. If it is not business affordable, you will not be able to do it. So one of the challenges for engineers is, to also to find ways and means to manufacture and leverage technology yeah. in such a manner that you can make it affordable and find ways and make, make ways to uh, outthink factors. I mean, I, it's a long answer. I'm sorry, yeah, I didn't yeah, get a one-line yeah. answer for that. Right. Yeah. 
see uh, we have already exceeded the allowed time limit. I'm so happy that the discussions with conflicts, which is always there in the clash of ideas, conflicts are a way to success, I believe. And uh, because people have started thinking that's why we have conflict, actually, I mean, we need to stop a bit fast because we are already behind schedule for the other events. And any more questions from the students? Uh, excuse me, sir. I would like to add something for the rest of the department, cyber security. So actually, I've been working with the National Cyber Defense Research Center for the past two years. So most of the things where we find out is that people lack the knowledge of how a hacker can get into it. So the basic ideology is that without your permission, a hacker cannot get into your, uh, your uh, mobile application or any other thing. So um, we have seen uh, cases where uh, there are a lot of the people, the hackers come up with the emotional um, therapy with the customer. For example, so uh, some persons might be uh, interested to have uh, some more money. So they are get, finding ways like so many, so many fraud loan apps where uh, they give it in a very less interest rates than uh, uh, the RBI. So uh, what we face once uh, one time faced a case where uh, a person had taken around just four thousand rupees from loan. And he was just needed to pay only five rupees per day, okay. And he was uh, taking in that uh, loan. And after three days, they came back and said they need to pay around six thousand rupees back. Otherwise, they will take his photo and uh, uh, they put it in the uh, uh, WhatsApp and saying that this person has actually raped a girl, a thirteen-year-old child, and they have even. Uh, taken the uh, snapshot. So how then we figured out how he has uh, uh, got his pictures, got his access to the contacts of his mobile. So once when we downloaded the application, so he had given the permission to access his contacts and access his uh, uh, photographs. So from that only, he had taken all the stuff. So basically, what I am trying to say is that you have to get a knowledge yeah. on how a hacker can it is there remaining unexplored and it's up to the students to explore further and increase their employability, degree of employability, that's what we should call it, by embracing new technologies as a study and as we, as we had a set of uh, eminent panelists, each one playing a role in a team in such a manner that A plus B plus C or other 2 plus 2 is 5 and not 4. Synergy has been there for the panel discussion. But unfortunately, time has been exceeded and we are going to stop to it. Again, I repeat, we passed only the tip of the iceberg, Lord remains to be explained and you know, explored, I should say. Uh, would you be panelists and you would be happy if this has ignited your minds to think further and to explore new technologies and have a good professional life. Thank you all.